What's up guys, I got a brand new video for you today. And today we're taking a look at this, the new Sony ZV-1 Mark II. And I'm pretty stoked on this camera because it has a lot of new features and updates over the original ZV-1. And this is the original ZV-1 right here. This is my camera that I've been using for like two and a half years, BTS shoots, vlogging, all kinds of different things. It's super handy to have, just throw it in the bag. I feel like the ZV-1 line of cameras is probably the best vlog style camera that Sony makes. I know they make a million cameras they say can work for vlogging, but this is the smallest, most pocketable. It's got a zoom lens. And uh, yeah, I'll show you more about this camera in a few minutes, but I just bought this old 2008 Honda Element. I'm gonna get it tinted. So I gotta drop it off and do a bunch of errands and then I'll tell you about the camera. All right, the ZV-1 Mark II is rocking a one inch, 20 megapixel stack sensor and has a really fast readout, so there's next to no rolling shutter. It has a new zoom lens, which I think a lot of people are gonna be happy about because Sony made it wider at 18 millimeters to 50 millimeters. It has the same rotating flip touch screen as the older ZV-1 Mark I, but now with full touch in the menus as well as UI. The button layout hasn't really changed that much, except now the new mic array has a different grill over top of it that's a part of the camera body. When it comes to ports, it has a 3.5 millimeter mic jack, USB-C for charging as well as using as a webcam, and micro HDMI. And then when we go to the bottom, it takes the same battery as the last ZV-1 as well as the RX100 cameras, and that's pretty much it. So while my car's getting tinted, I need to find a place to kill some time. I'm out here by the water. And as you can see, this lens is way wider. This is actually with active stabilization turned on. And this lens is an 18 to 50. So it's quite a bit wider. Sony listened to user feedback on the original ZV-1. It's only a 24 to 70. It has a further reach, but it's not wide enough, especially when you turn active stabilization on. It looks more like this usually. So if you're wondering what I'm using for audio, I'm using the new Rode Wireless Me, and they just sent that out to me. So I decided to try it out because I feel like it's a good combo with this camera if you want a mic off camera. Because you never know when you want to be this far away from the camera and you can still talk to it and hear clear audio. But obviously the mics built into the ZV-1 are pretty good. And I'll show you what that sounds like right now. So this is what the built-in mics sound like on the ZV-1 Mark II. It's got the same audio setup that's in the ZV-E1. So that three capsule mic setup. And when you flip the camera around and face it this way, you should still be able to hear me because it's set to auto and it'll automatically adjust which mic is facing which way when it sees a face or when it doesn't see a face. So I'll probably use the built-in mic a little bit more, but I'm gonna stick to using this for now. All right, so I'm here at this random baseball diamond. I was walking by it after I dropped the car off. And I'm here to show you guys the autofocus system because this has a pretty snappy autofocus system. It's locked onto my eye right now. Unfortunately, in order to show the screen capture out of the camera through the HDMI, I have to switch it to 1080p. Otherwise, it's just a clean feed. So if you're wondering why it's 1080p right now, it's so I can show you guys how the autofocus works. Clearly, it's gonna be snappy. What they're saying is it's got the A9 Mark II autofocus system with some updates. It doesn't have the new AI chip that's in the ZV-E1. So it does have real-time tracking, but you're not gonna be able to do insect eye detection, car, plane, train, all that stuff. But you can do human and animal. And this is what the autofocus looks like. It should be completely fine. Should be tracking me in the frame, no problem. So just like the ZV-1 Mark I and the ZV-E1 and the ZV-E10, this has the background blur defocus button. You can click it on and it'll just open the aperture up and adjust everything for you. I probably won't use that, but something that's really cool in these cameras is it does have the focus mode for product showcase. So you could turn on product showcase mode. And basically what this does is it will focus on your face until you hold a product up. So typically if you had just regular eye detection on, it would just stay locked onto your eye and people would have to cover their face. So uh, this is what it looks like. You hold up the product to the camera and if my face is still in frame, it should still be focused on the product and then it'll focus back to my face. This is awesome if you do this type of stuff where you're showing something to the camera and you don't wanna have to try and block your face. Um, this is also good for like streamers that are trying to show something to the camera and it'll always focus back on your face because that's how product showcase works. Just like the new ZV-E1, it has full touch in the menus as well as the UI, so you can swipe up, swipe down, make any change directly from the screen. You can trigger record, change your white balance, your shutter speed, your aperture, and that's a lot easier than reaching around to the back of the camera if you're vlogging. And of course, it has the whole new menu layout, which is a lot easier to navigate compared to the old menu. And thankfully, just like the ZV-E1 Mark I, it has a three-stop ND.
So the battery is about to die and I was about to swap the battery and just realized one underrated change they made is that they moved the quarter 20 mount off to the far left side of the camera. So now that the battery door is actually accessible. So when your battery dies, you don't have to take your tripod plate off and you can easily swap the batteries, which is something that isn't on the original ZV-1. So if you need to swap the batteries on the ZV-1 Mark I, look how close the tripod plate is. You have to take it off every single time to change the battery. And the battery life on these cameras aren't that great. You're only gonna get about an hour of recording in 4K video. All right, I'm holding both cameras at the same exact distance. This is the ZV-1 Mark I, and this is the ZV-1 Mark II. And you can see the difference here, 24 millimeters with active stabilization on versus 18 millimeters with active stabilization turned on. And there's quite a bit of a difference. I'm glad they made it wider because as you can see, it's like way too close. Another new feature they brought over from the ZV-E1 is cinematic vlog mode. And that basically just puts crop bars on your 16 by nine footage. It has a bunch of different filters, a bunch of different looks that you can apply, and it bakes it directly into the footage. So I shot a little sequence here. So this is cinematic vlog mode. All right, so here are my thoughts on the ZV-1 Mark II. I think it's a nice little upgrade over the ZV-1 Mark I. Um, it's got improved autofocus, obviously it's got the better menu system, and it's got a nice wide lens, but there are some compromises by using this smaller slash wider zoom lens. It's a variable aperture of f1.8 to f4, and that's pretty drastic compared to the ZV-1 Mark I, which is a 24 to 70 lens that goes from f1.8 to f2.8. So in low light, the original ZV-1 lens would actually be a little bit better than this. Um, and as you're zooming, you're gonna notice that the aperture stops down as well. And that's not really ideal. You would have to leave this camera at F4 in order to not notice that variable aperture. And so that's, that's just something you gotta think about when you're getting this camera. Obviously the 18 millimeter wide angle lens is way better for vlogging versus trying to hold it way out here like this on the ZV-1 Mark One. I. I keep, if I get these names messed up, I, I don't even know, ZV-1, Mark one. Now obviously there's S-Log3 in this camera just like the ZV-1 Mark one, but this camera doesn't have S-Cinetone, which is weird because pretty much every camera Sony has come out with in the last couple years has gotten S-Cinetone. So there's no S-Cinetone on this camera. And obviously I showed it has that cinematic vlog mode, but it's omitting that S-Cinetone. There's a bird just chirping like crazy back here every time I talk, so bear with it. Now this camera doesn't have any improved bit rates or frame rates. It still shoots 4K video up to 30 frames per second at 100 megabits per second, and that's 4208 bit. So there is no 10 bit video on this camera. So that's kind of disappointing, but I guess it makes sense. This camera would probably overheat really fast because it's so small. Now I'm really glad that they added the new UI and menus into this camera because Let's face it, Sony's old menu system wasn't that great, and this new menu system is really awesome, especially the ability to do all the touchscreen options, being able to change your white balance, your shutter speed, your aperture, all from the touchscreen. It's really key, especially when you're vlogging, you don't wanna to have to try and reach around behind the camera, you can do it all right from the screen. Now I'm pretty happy with my ZV-1 Mark I. I don't know if I'd upgrade to this, but if I decided I wanted a wider lens, I'd probably pick this up because I ended up using my ZV-1 way more than I thought I was going to, and it's probably one of my most used cameras. I don't really talk about it that much, but I use it a lot for all my vlogs and BTS stuff, so I think I'm gonna end the video here. I don't know what else to talk about. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike this video, give it a thumbs down twice. Don't forget to hit that notification bell, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.